In parts one and two, I went over what Louis XIV did to France. Today, we'll move on to what a President Donald Trump could do to the United States. What scares me about the idea of a Trump presidency isn't the embarrassing disaster that everybody expects. What scares me is the idea of a successful President Trump. As I hope my analysis of France made clear, it's possible for a country to look very successful and continue to do great things long after what makes that country special has died. The United States is a phenomenally powerful country. A dictator like President Trump could do a lot with it. And to be honest, a dictatorship is what we've been working towards for quite some time. Each new president has added to the powers that were created by his predecessor. The growing size and complexity of the federal government since the Progressive Era has favored the single decision maker in the executive office over a fractious and dysfunctional Congress. It's only a sense of dignity and self-restraint from individual presidents that has kept this process from accelerating. Trump quite clearly has none of that dignity and self-restraint. Trump doesn't just have Louis XIV's vulgar sense of interior design, he also has an autocrat's sense of how a government works. He seems to think he can just snap his fingers when he's president and make things happen. But I'm the decider, and I decide what is best, but I'm the decider. The military will refuse because they've been trained to turn down and refuse illegal orders. So what would you do as commander-in-chief if the U.S. military refused to carry out those orders? They won't refuse. They're not going to refuse me. Believe me. I'm a leader. I'm a leader. I've always been a leader. I've never had any problem leading people. If I say do it, they're going to do it. That's what leadership is all about. Even targeting terrorist families. Well, look, you know, when a family... Uh... This mentality is unacceptable in a president. In previous decades, he'd never have gotten anywhere near the office. Most people assume that if he somehow wins, he'll quickly be destroyed by some mixture of frustration, uh, incompetence, or past corruption catching up with him. I'm not so sure. Just like Louis XIV's consolidation of central power was set up by a century of French kings and administrators, Trump's ability to do damage has been set up by about a century of political developments. In parts one and two, I identified France's problem as the destruction of power centers outside of Paris. The process isn't as far along, but the exact same thing is happening in the United States. In the 10th Federalist Paper, James Madison, the father of the Constitution, laid out one of the basics of how power is supposed to work in the United States. The founders were obsessed with tyrannies, specifically the tyranny of the majority, and how to avoid it. Madison argued that the size of the United States would help to defend it. Sure, some kind of nasty faction could take over a state or two, but the nasty factions of all the other states would band together to keep that initial faction from taking over the country. That crucial balance between local and central power has been shifting for decades. Since Woodrow Wilson, power has been accelerating towards Washington, D.C. Occasionally, it's for very good reasons. But mostly, it's just because power likes to collect, and our technologically enabled society makes that collection easy. As I've pointed out elsewhere, the country used to be run by competing networks. Now it's run by just one network. We can argue about whether or not rule by our Ivy League masters is a good thing, but this election has made it very clear that that rule has built incredible weakness into our system of checks and balances. The few actual policies he has advanced require breathtaking uses of federal power. Whether or not a deportation force is created, kicking out all the illegal immigrants would require sweeping new powers for U.S. immigration and customs enforcement. Trump's only decent healthcare idea requires stripping the states of their ability to manage their own healthcare markets. That idea, which would almost certainly make healthcare cheaper, is a great example of the kinds of short-term great ideas that have made our system unstable. We've spent decades building an imperial presidency. My great fear is that Donald Trump is the emperor we've been building it for. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And if you'd like to help me make more videos like this one, please click on the Patreon link here to find out how.